Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. This is where we left off in video four. <clears throat> um, and we were working through wireframing uh, and then sort of marking up the wireframe using a 12 column grid. Um, so here's the HTML where we left off. Um, so if you're not familiar with or you're confused at this point, go back and watch video four. Um, so this is where we left off. This is what it looks like in the browser. And then just as a quick sort of reminder, this is kind of uh, the layout that we're sort of going for. We want a big image, and then we want this sort of 50-50 um, uh, layout. Um, and so let's make that happen. So a couple things we can do here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to um, introduce, oops, I want to introduce this big hero image. And so what I'll do for you is in the, uh, or the uh, note section of the YouTube video, um, I'll provide a, uh, a link to all of the images I'm using here if you want to use the same images as me. If you want to use your own images, that's fine. There's lots of different uh, really nice stock photography uh, websites out there now that uh, you can actually get some, some nice looking stock photos. Um, but I'll be using some of these uh, some of these images and I'll upload this folder for you. Um, another thing to note that in my website folder I created a folder called images and in that folder I put all of my images. So just keep things organized. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is um, we want to add our hero image. And so just as a quick recap of where we're at, we've got a row where our header is. We've got another row where our hero image is. The interesting thing is there's nothing showing up because we haven't actually added a hero image. Um, and then we've got a row uh, where we've got our 50-50 layout. And again, nothing's showing up because we haven't added our image. And then we've got a row with our footer. And within that row, we've got three columns. One, two, and three. Uh, and so what we'll try to do is we'll try to style this up. We'll try to actually make this look more like a website than it does now. And I may go for a while, or I might cut this off if I think this is going too long. So we'll just kind of see where we go from there. Um, so let's get started. So there's a couple ways we can do a hero image. And I'm going to show you uh, one way that's not necessarily the correct way. Uh, and then I'll show you another way that I think is probably a better way to do this. Um, so the first thing we can do is we can just add an image using the image tag, right? So if we did image, and if I'm, I'm going to pull up um, my file structure again, just to remind you that I have a new folder called images. Um, and so I want to, I have uh, an image called hero.jpg, and that's what I want to link to. So I'm going to do image source equals images slash hero.jpg. And again, I created that folder, so it's important to add that images folder, um, that images uh, path in your link. Uh, and then we'll create an alt, so um, hero image of, I can't remember what it is of even, I think a computer. Um, okay, so we can actually just put the image in the HTML itself, okay? So if we do that, this is what happens. So when we've got the image in there, there's some issues with just plopping the image in there. One, it's sort of wider than the screen. When you resize the screen, the big hero image doesn't do very well in resizing. And so one thing we can do is we can actually make a change uh, in the CSS to this particular image. So one thing we can do is we can call up hero image, this div class, and then call up this specific image. So to do that, we can select the hero image div, and then to call up a, an element inside of another element, we can just do space and then IMG. So to just kind of show you what it's doing, you kind of read backwards with CSS sometimes, and you can kind of uh, think of it as all images or any image inside of the div class hero image, we're going to make some change to. OK, 
Okay, uh, so a couple things we can do. Uh, we can do a um, an attribute called object fit, and we can call it a cover image. So basically, what this does is it allows the image to resize proportionally to the window view, the width that you set. Um, and so the width we want to set is 100% because we want sort of a fluid layout. Um, and we also need to set a height. Um, and I don't, I don't know if a height's necessary, but I'd like to set a height. So I'm going to do 700 pixels. Um, and so basically what we'll do is this will fit the image into these parameters. Um, and as we resize, as the screen resizes, the image will continue to fit, it, but the aspect ratio will not get thrown off. So you won't get a distorted image or an image that looks kind of funky. Um, so what we're seeing now is 100 100% wide. And if we resize, the image resizes and sort of realigns with the window viewport, which is kind of cool. And you would think, oh, that's perfect. We'll just do that. The problem with object fit cover, and this is a great resource. So if you just Google, can I use this CSS? Um, it's can I use .com, And if you just put object fit, it'll tell you which browsers can handle specific CSS attributes. And so the problem here is, we're all good in this green area. Everything is good, basically, except for Internet Explorer and Edge. So if you pulled this up on any sort of Microsoft browser, um, it wouldn't resize. And your hero image would look really bad. Um, and so object fit is really neat, but until it's fully supported, which means supported by all of these browsers and all versions of these browsers, we have to come up with another solution. So that was a really long explanation for we're going to do this a different way. So one thing we can do is we can just actually take out the HTML image and we can um, create what's called a background image in CSS. So I'm just going to delete this whole bit of styling. And what we'll do is we, we will put a background image on this particular div. So we'll make this div will give it a background image. So our div is hero image. We'll give it a background image. So we do we use the attribute background colon uh, URL. Actually, I think it's source src, and then we'll do images slash hero dot jpg. Um, and then we also need to set a height um, because right now there's nothing in the div. Therefore, it will be a background of nothing. Um, so if we set a height, at least it'll know to fill 700 pixels wide um, with the image hero.jpg. Okay, so it's a similar way to do it, but it's just using CSS instead of HTML. So if we refresh, I don't see anything. Um, maybe it is URL. Yeah, so it's background colon URL instead of SRC. That's my mistake. Um, so just to reiterate, it's background colon URL. And then you put the URL in parentheses. We set a height. The thing is, is we have a similar problem as we did before we use the object fit solution. Um, so we can do an, a similar solution. Um, called background size, background dash size cover. Um, and what we'll see is it will resize with the viewport size as the viewport size changes. One thing we can also add is we can sort of try to center this image um, as the uh, as the screen resizes. So one way to do that is if you do a space after this parenthesis, no repeat. So we're going to say regardless of how big the image is, we only want it to occur one time. And then center, center horizontally and center vertically. So no repeat, center, center. And um, you can kind of see it keeps the, without that, 
it wouldn't it doesn't keep the computer in the viewport if we if we didn't put that little bit of code on there but you can see it resizes really nicely it gives us a nice little hero image okay so that's the first thing we wanted to do that was a long way to do that real quickly I'll show you if we go into um, can I use as well can I use that um, and we do background size, it's supported in all the browsers, right? And so it'll work, it'll work the way that you want it to work, or it will look the way you want it to look across browsers. Okay, so the second thing we need to do is we need to add an image to this uh, left-hand side. So if we, if we go back to our sort of inspirational website one of the things we really liked is the image and then the text and so we need an image on the left side here um, but there's just nothing there right and so we created a placeholder for it called content dash image and we're just going to do the same thing as we did here so I'm actually going to and you can do this as well copy and paste this entire style and I'm going to change hero to content and I am going to find what image file we're going to use. We're going to use writing.png, I think. No, 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 writing.jpg. So writing.jpg, we can set a height. And we probably don't want it 700 pixels tall. We probably want it something less. So I'm just going to set it 400 for now. We'll keep the background sized cover on there. Um, and we'll see what happens. Great. So what we're seeing now is I filled in, I think I want it a little taller. I'm going to go height 500 pixels. I filled in half of the screen with a background image. And that's this image here. Uh, and we can go back to our HTML to see, oh, we have this div class 6 that we introduced um, last time. Uh, and it now is looking how it's supposed to look. So we've got a hero image. We've got a row with an image and some text. And then we have our footer. Um, one thing that I, I'm noticing, just sort of off the top of my head, um, is that I don't really like the image on image juxtaposition here. So having an image hero image here and then immediately having sort of another image below it. And if we actually look at our inspirational website, it does have, it's broken up. So the hero image breaks up a little bit with, uh, it's not juxtaposed right on top of another image. So one thing I can do is we can add a row of content um, to sort of break up these two rows. So if we go back to our hero image row, uh, this is the row here. I'm going to just create, and you follow along with me, I'm going to create another row. And we're going to comment like we always do, row closes here. So just as a reminder to comment, we do care, opening caret, exclamation point dash dash and then whatever you want to put in your comment and then dash dash close caret. Okay, so it's important to document your code. Um, so we're going to add a row and I, you know, I've noticed these, I wish I had one pulled up to show you guys, but I've noticed these three column layouts that are sort of really typical of business sites, but I, I kind of like the three, the three column layout deal. So I'm going to do a row with three columns um, where I'm just going to highlight three things that I do really well, um, presuming this is my portfolio homepage. So I'm going to, to do three equal columns, we're going to do 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So we're going to do div, we want to introduce our columns, div class 4, and I'm going to close div class 4, and I'm going to create um, column 4 closes here. I'm going to comment where column four closes. So I'm actually, and again, follow along with me, I'm kind of teaching you all of the tricks of the trade here, but copy that entire div, div class four, and the closing div, and the comment, and paste it in twice. 
So we've got three columns now. Div class 4, div class 4, div class equal with columns, each spanning 4 out of 12 columns total. Okay, now I want to highlight my writing. So I'm going to put a heading called writing. I'm going to highlight my coding, put a heading called coding, and I'm going to highlight my uh, teaching. So I've basically created three columns in this row, and there they are. So now um, that row now exists, um, and it's sort of breaking up our big hero image with this second image, second row. Um, so I'm going to also add a little text just so I can get a, more of a visual feel of what this is going to look like. I'm going to use this tool called Hipster Ipsum. It's a lorem ipsum generator, but it just generates funny little sentences. Um, and so I'm just going to copy the first two sentences. You can go to hipsum.co if you'd like. Um, just copy some text so I can pop it in a paragraph tag um, underneath each of these three major headings. So I'm going to pop in a little text there. I'll pop in another sentence. Just a little bit of text, just as a placeholder again, so I can kind of visually see. Um, what it would look like with text. Okay, so again, what I just did is I just popped in some placeholder text under the heading, writing, coding, and teaching. So let's refresh our page. And so now we are looking, it's looking a little, um, a little better. Um, and so the other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to add um, I, I put these in the images folder, and so you can actually um, follow along or, or download these images. But I, I downloaded three little PNG icons um, that I'm going to put above each of these headings. Um, so to do that, I'm going to just do my image tag, the source, which is the folder images, and the file is called, oops, coding.png, and we'll put an alt tag, don't forget to close your quote, we'll put an alt tag, coding icon. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that entire thing, again a little trick of the trade, and I'm going to paste it for all three of my headings. Obviously I'm going to need to change the image, so I'm going to change coding to writing. I'm going to change my alt text to writing. And I'm going to change teaching, coding to teaching, and change my alt text to teaching. All right, so I've added a, a row with three columns. I've got a little icon, I've got a heading, and I've got some text. The thing we want to do for sure before we wrap up this video is I want to, I want a little padding, I want a little space below, between these icons and this image. And I want a little space um, between this row and the next row, and I also want to center all of these things. So we'll do that, um, and then we'll take a break, and then the next video we'll do some advanced CSS. Um, so if we go back to our HTML, you'll notice that this entire thing is wrapped in a div, oops, a div called row, right? And so we could add margins or padding to the, the row, and we could center all of the text inside of this div class row, but the problem with that is we've got other rows. We've got other classes called row, and so it would add padding to all of the rows, and it would center the text in all of the rows, and I don't necessarily know if that's what we want to do at this point. So what we can do is we can utilize um, a, an additional div, an additional divider, um, where we can make the change to right inside of row. So we'll, what we'll call this is something meaningful. So I'm going to call this um, I'm going to call this three I'm going to call this content three columns. There's probably a better 
It's important to name your divs meaningfully so you remember what they are. Um, so there may be a better way to, um, to name that, but I'm just going to name it that. So this is div class content dash three dash column. So now when we see that we can remember we've got our content in three columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that right before the row closes, right? So it opened right after the row opened, and I'm going to close it right before the row closes. And I'm going to comment, so caret, exclamation point, dash, dash. Um, what do we call it? Probably not a good name if I can't remember it. Content three columns closes here. So again, we're just best practices um, documenting where our columns close. Okay, so a couple things. Uh, and I'm going to just actually select all of this and indent it. Oh, it didn't work. There we go. And indent it just because I'm OCD and I like everything perfect. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that. Uh, and so a couple things. We're going to now be able to make changes to this class instead of to row because there, we have so many other rows in our HTML page that we only we want to specify the specific row we want to make a change to, which is content three columns. Okay, so what we'll do is um, we'll call, we'll select a class, which is the period, and then we'll select content dash three dash columns. I think that's the right, that's a terrible name. Content three columns. Um, and so what we want to do is, and I'll explain this in detail at the beginning of the next video, but just as a, a quick primer, we want to add margins or padding. So one of the things we can do to, to create spacing, more white space, is using the attributes margin or padding. In this case, and I'm not going to explain why, I'm going to use padding. And we can do padding top, and I'm just going to add 20 pixels of padding to the top. Okay, so we'll do padding dash top colon and then we want to specify how much padding, 20 pixels of padding. So as you can see, this got pushed down 20 pixels. And I want to do the same thing for the bottom. So I'm going to do padding dash bottom, 20 pixels. So just pay attention when we refresh. Oh, there must already be 20 pixels of padding. Um, but we'll just leave that in there. And the other thing we want to do is we want to center everything. So what we can do is we can do a, an attribute called text align colon center. Oops. Text align center. And everything gets centered. Okay. So I like that. I actually think also I would like a little more padding, a little more space. So I'm going to go 40 and 40. I'm going to change these 20s to 40s to double the amount of space. Um, Okay, so that's a little better. Um, what else? I would also like to change the background color a little bit of this um, of this particular uh, div. And so because it's kind of just white on white, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, if you just Google along with me, flat UI color picker. This is a tool that just gives you a bunch of colors that you can choose from uh, and I'm going to choose I'm going to go in the gray section and I just want kind of like an off-white so I'm just going to choose porcelain here um, so I'm going to copy this hexadecimal code ECF 0 F 1 just copy that and I'm going to do background and then I'm just going to do you have to do the number sign and then the six uh, character hexadecimal code. Okay, so we'll do background and then that off white, and that should make our div off white. And that's interesting that it's not, it's not um, spanning the whole div. I wonder if we need to do background dash color. Nope. Um, hmm. That's interesting. I'm going to try one more thing. Height, we'll try to put a 100% height on it. Nope. So I will troubleshoot why that's not, or actually, I'll just troubleshoot why that's happening now while I have you guys. 
Um, div content three columns. Hmm. Do I have a missing closing div? Div class four. Well, I will troubleshoot that and we'll take care of that and make sure that our background is totally gray um, right at the beginning of the next video. So we've started to get images and text sort of um, lined up how we want them. This will conclude our wireframe to, to grid series or sub-series in this video. In the next video, we'll do some advanced CSS and really start to tweak this thing and make it, make it start to look nice. Um, so until next time, uh, we will pick up then.